All right, Point Nation, today we're going to review how well the Grumbacher Academy Acrylic Paint works for acrylic paint pouring. Now, I bought this kit on Amazon. It was something like $22, $24. There's three ounces each of these, so I got uh, 15 ounces for $21. That makes it just over a dollar an ounce, a dollar 30 an ounce, dollar 20 an ounce, give or take. Surprisingly enough, this is not the cheapest place to get it. Um, you can actually get it from Blick or Jerry's Ardorama at about a dollar per ounce. And that is about as cheap as I could find them. They have three ounce, you know, 90 gram, 200 gram, which is seven ounces, give or take. And then they have a, a 25 gram, the really small ones that I've found. Again, you get them at local specialty stores, Michaels, Amazon, Walmart, but Blick and Jerry's Ardorama were the cheapest places that I could find them. Now this Grumbacher is made by a company, it's actually the Grumbacher Company, which is now owned by the Chart Pack family, which is a US-based art supply company. Um, the original Grumbacher started in New York, and they've been a local paint um, and art supply manufacturer for 100 years at this point. Um, like I mentioned, the cost for this is actually on the expensive end. It's about a dollar, a little more than a dollar per ounce. So we're going to see how well that translates. One claim to fame that this Grumbacher has is all of their paints are light fastness one, which means they claim that all their paints should last over a hundred years with the light fastness one on the ASTM rating. I did look it up. Every paint that I looked at did have a light fastness of one. And they claim that these are student level acrylics. They're, they're professional acrylics at a student level acry acrylic price. So we're going to put that to the test. Each of the bottles, they are labeled just like a professional acrylic, which if you've seen any of these videos I've done before, some of these don't have the light fatness rating, they don't have the pigments or other things, but all of these have the opacity, light fatness one, uh, the type that it is, in this case it's, um, I guess I should come up here to the English version, the acrylic po polymer and then the pigments that uh, it has in it. So, like we've done before, we're going to pick a couple of these colors and do some just straight color mixing and see how it works. So I chose to mix with the cyan, magenta, and yellow. We're gonna try the magenta and cyan first. These are actually pretty thick compared to some of the other student level acrylics that I've looked at so far. So, so far so good. Nice and buttery. They mix really well. That purple is nice and deep. I like that a lot. All right, so A plus for that. Let's try the magenta here. And a little of the process yellow. Wow, that yellow had a lot of pigment in it. Usually the red or the magenta just takes over, but look at how... And I know the red had pigment because this turned a nice purple. So that's nice to see actually that the yellow has a good amount of pigment in it and doesn't get overpowered that quickly by the magenta. So just mixing, that looks really good. I get great colors from both of those. Uh, big thumbs up on that. All right, for the next part of the test, we're going to mix 10 grams of Liquitex pouring medium, glue, and Floetrol to five grams of paint, which is the normal one, one part paint, two parts pouring medium for uh, 
student level acrylic. And then we're gonna do a tint test. And this is gonna be 10 parts Floetrol to one part paint. So 50 grams of Floetrol and five grams of paint. And all of these I'm using the ultramarine blue. So I, do, I expect this. And that's about as, about as quick as it goes. Mixed well, nice color. Just what you expect from Flow or uh, from Liquitex. So this is the glue. Mix quickly, great color. So far, the paint itself is turning out to be as quality as they say it is. Floetrol. Same thing, easy to mix. So here's the real test. When I thin it down, 10 to one instead of two to one, how does it look? Especially when it's thinned down in a, a mixture that has some white to it. So it's gonna lighten everything up. So it mixed quite well. I don't have streaks after that much mixing. But as you can see, the it lightened up quite a bit. So it's just average for a student level acrylic in how much pigment it has, at least when it comes to acrylic pouring. But with that little bit of mixing, there's not a lot of free dark color. It mixed really well. So I'd give it a, an average, just an average, you know, thumbs to the side. Mixed really well, which I haven't had a problem with many of these colors, but it did not hold up to the tint test. All right, so we've mixed up a bunch of colors here. This one is the cyan and yellow. This one is mostly cyan with a tiny bit of yellow. This is mostly yellow with a little bit of ultramarine blue, and this is ultramarine blue. And I did a drip test just to make sure. I add a little bit more water to each of these three, but only a drop or two. But th I think this shows off the colors a little bit better than it'll look like. Now, one thing I am not doing is I am not using any white in this. And the reason being is look how the mixing white turned up. I could not get it to mix at all. It's all chunky and nasty. This is zinc oxide white. Now, if you don't know, um, mixing white is actually used to, to try and maintain the color, but to give it a little, bit, a, lot, a little bit lighter, but still bright. If you use something like a titanium white in a color, then what happens is the color gets muted and it gets more pastel looking. So that's the difference between mixing white and titanium white. I usually use titanium white because not only do I want the, the nice white color, but I also want the heaviness to create cells and things like that. But this did not mix at all with the Floetrol, which is very surprising. I tried to mix it with um, the uh, glue and Liquitex and had a similar thing. This Grumbacher white, mixing white, does not like to mix with a pouring medium, which is crazy. I did a little bit, you can kind of see right here. I did a little bit of a, a mix just in the bottom of my my container with white and red just to see if it was the bad batch of mixing white and it seemed to mix quite well. So I'm surprised at how oddly that turned out. Like I say, it mixed, it mixed up pretty well. So maybe I got a bad batch, maybe that uh, mixing white isn't really good to use, but I did not like it at all. That's why it's not going into the pour. So I ran out of my eight by 10 canvases. So we're gonna use a 10 by 10, 100 square inches on top, 20 square inches on the side, 120 square inches divided by 25. I need about five ounces of paint. This is about six ounces of paint, so I should be good. And I love this cyan color, so I'm gonna use it first. 
Do about half. I think I'll do this. Right, and as with my other tests, we're just going to do a straight pour. I did mix this just barely, that's why I have all these little tiny holes. If I had left it for a couple hours or overnight, I could have gotten rid of a lot of those. If this video has been helpful to you, please leave a like and let me know down below if you have used Grumbacher and how it has worked for you. All right, so we'll do a quick close up here. As of right now, I'm kind of unimpressed with this. I love the cyan color that they gave. Maybe I shouldn't have put the two blues together. I thought they looked pretty pretty well together on this, but it didn't really turn out with color separation that I was hoping for, and maybe maybe smaller lines, it could be. But even with the color separation that I get, I don't like how much it mixed and overlapped there. And I was at a, a medium consistency, maybe just shy of a medium consistency. So overall, the colors are eh seen better. I've seen, you know, craft is obviously worse, but a couple of the paintings that I saw other people have made with these weren't the greatest either, so it's kind of a negative for me. So just quickly to go over uh, my thumbs up and thumb down, how well the paint mixed? Thumbs up. They mixed really well. They mixed well with the medium, also a thumbs up. Pigment load, average. For everything that they say, this is a student level acrylic with professional level pigment. I don't know that I buy that. Cost, thumbs down. It's on the expensive side, over a dollar an ounce for all of the paints that I could see. Uh, light fastness, absolutely a thumbs up. We're, go we're basing that off of their recommendation that everything is light fast one. All of the paints in this kit that I had were light fast one. So if that is the case, that would be a big thumbs up for that. Color selection, there's 45 colors that I could find online. And I, like I say, I really love this color. I need to use it in something else, some other pores, but I love the, the deep cyan color of this and some of the colors even that it made. Availability in the US, you can get it at almost all of the hobby stores. Blick and Jerry's Autorama had it the cheapest, 329, 350 for the 90 gram or three ounce. So um, you can get it everywhere. So that would be a thumbs up. Overall, this is middle to low of the pack. It's just too expensive for how much we use with acrylic pouring. And other than the light fastness, nothing jumps out at me uh, really greatly there. As soon as I have my video that sums up all of the different testing that I've done, I will link it here. Otherwise, you'll get one that YouTube says you will enjoy.